This is a warning video for women. We've been told to fight the patriarchy and condemn toxic masculinity. But what if it's male feminists that are the men you really should be avoiding? The low testosterone, soy loving beta male that seems harmless and oh so liberal. What if he's the true predator? Personally, I've always been creeped out when a guy calls himself a feminist. I'm gonna keep saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist. Which would mean he supports feminism. So the definition of feminism is, one, the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes, two, organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Okay, I get it as a man wanting equality between the sexes, but that's not what feminism is anymore. Unless you're living under a rock, you'd know that third wave feminists are more interested in special privileges for having a vagina, which comes at the consequence of men, and making men enemy number one instead of an ally. It's about division. Feminists nowadays bitch when a man hits on them, holds the door open for them, whistles at them, spreads his legs too far apart on the subway. Why would any man support this? Firstly, they're ridiculous complaints, but second of all, it goes against his very own interests especially in the workplace. Gender parity, the concept of hiring an equal number of women and men just on the basis of biological sex is a ridiculous concept. It's a progressive idea that is really hiring discrimination. You can't hire someone because of their gender alone. Gender parity is the definition of sexism. And guess who usually bears the brunt of this insane policy? Men. It's usually a man who has to vacate his position so a woman can fill the role. Like this guy, Ted McMeekin, a longtime provincial politician who stepped aside so a woman could take his job. He said, Like our prime minister, I've never been afraid to call myself a feminist. In fact, I've always been proud of being an honorary member of the Women's Caucus and working for equality, he said in the statement. But sometimes the best way for a man to advance the equality of women may be to step back and make room at the table. For me, this is such a time. Famed Professor Jordan B. Peterson has a theory on male feminists. So in a sense, psychologically, when you're talking about postmodernists and their rejection of these classic male structures, or what they're doing is realizing that they're not going to compete in the, the classic, as stated, male hierarchy, so they're creating their own version of it. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's the creative element. Sure, well, we, we, we asked earlier, what's the motivation of these pathological guys who are out there, like, bolstering up the feminists? Yeah, well, you know. They don't compete any other way. They don't compete. They figured out how to compete. They compete as allies, let's say. Mm hmm. Very sneaky. Wow. Yeah, wow. Sneaky. Yeah. And that's how everybody always describes him, too. When you, I mean, it's almost like a, you, we, I avoid doing it because I just, it just almost feels gross to label them like that. But mm -hmm. that's, that is the way you think of male feminists. You think mm -hmm. of them as sneaky. Mm hmm. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, it's creepy. And discriminat uh, discriminatory towards classic male behavior. Yeah, well, and no wonder. Yeah. They haven't got a hope of competing in that hierarchy. Wow. That's deep. That is deep. This is going to be hurtful to a lot of people. There's a lot of people listening to this right now very upset. Yeah, very, well, very you triggered. know, you, you asked earlier why, why <laughs> the postmodernists don't like blunt speech. Yeah, that's well, why. Well, that's why, man. You yeah. know, it's like... The truth is something that burns. It burns off dead wood. And people don't like having their dead wood burnt off often because they're like 95% dead wood. In my opinion, there's something very manipulative when a man uses the term feminist. I see it as a way to exploit a woman's defenses so she'll open up trust and let the guy in. Very much like a sexual predator would groom his victims. Calling yourself a feminist to ally alongside women for your own nefarious purposes, whether it be for political or sexual reasons, is sneaky. Remember, these men are describing themselves as feminists to target specific women, those that believe in feminism. These females think that beta males are their allies, safe territory, if you will. They're not the horrible men that would catcall mansplain or not use consent. These male feminists are to be trusted because they're fighting the same cause, equality. But the truth is, these men are looking for sexual opportunity and will exploit women's emotions to get what they want. Since male feminists are typically effeminate looking and sounding, which makes them appear non-threatening, this can enable them to cozy up to unsuspecting women. 
Take the Women's March, for example. Look at these guys. They're not exactly the archetype of the masculine man, are they? Wearing pussy hats? Come on, talk about submissive. But don't be fooled. These guys are using the feminist ideology to surround themselves with women they wouldn't normally have access to. And don't forget, they really can't compete with alpha males, which is why they hate alpha males because they are competition and they know a masculine man with a higher testosterone count could easily steal their girlfriend. Academic studies have also linked weak physique in men to socialist ideology than stronger dudes. Julian Assange tweeted this in October. Women, I will let you in on a male secret. Men know that constantly self-proclaiming male feminists are often predatory sleazebags. They are intensely disliked by other men because of their manipulative qualities and not in general because they are viewed to be sex traitors. That's a pretty in-your-face statement, so let's show some examples to back up his claim. First up, there's this guy, Michael Hafford, a former freelance columnist for Broadly and freelance writer for outlets like Refinery29, Rolling Stone, T Magazine, and more. Hafford's column at Broadly, Vice's site aimed at women, was, quote, male feminist here, a satire of male feminism and allyship that ran for three months in 2015. Now, multiple women have accused Hafford of sexual assault, including violent encounters of choking and punching during sex. Then there was this guy, Goran Lindbergh. He was the chief of police of Uppsala, the city north of Stockholm. Lindbergh was a staunch enemy of sexism in the police force and established a reputation as Sweden's leading progressive policeman. Lindbergh was jailed for six and a half years on charges of rape, pimping, and procuring. He was covertly running a child prostitution racket. Then you have alleged serial sexual predator Harvey Weinstein, who never openly declared himself a feminist, but as a staunch Democrat who publicly supported liberal feminist causes like Planned Parenthood, it seems all the more hypocritical. More male feminist allies include Devin Faraci, embroiled in a sexual assault scandal that cost him his job, Rob Marmohilo, more than 20 women came forward and revealed Rob sexually harassed them online, Matt Hickey, three women accused the tech journalist of raping them. He also had an alleged porn audition scam. Hugo Schweizer, he tried to kill his girlfriend with fumes from a gas stove, had extramarital affairs, and exchanged lewd messages with a porn star. And lastly, comedian Louis C.K., who recently admitted to multiple allegations he masturbated in front of women, many of them comedic colleagues. And the jury's still out on the world's most famous male feminist, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, but he fits the bill of a weak, effeminate beta male. And his numerous declarations of feminism are super creepy. So what do you think about male feminists? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. And to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me. Have a great day.